Today is Saturday, March 20th, and uh, got a couple of updates I wanted to uh, fill people in on. Um, sorry, things are a bit of a mess. I've got a couple of canopies and a whole bunch of projects going on right now. But uh, anyway, so the first of the videos uh, that I've been making for the TSI Build Manual video series have been uh, posted on Sling's uh, YouTube channel. So I'll post a link in the description uh, for where to find that. And I just kind of wanted to go over a couple of other little things, little tips and tricks that uh, might help you guys out a little bit. So one thing that I figured out just recently, and I wish I discovered it a long time ago, is uh, every once in a while when you're building these planes, you'll need to shorten a rivet. And uh, anybody who's done it, you know, you kind of put it in a hole and tap on the, the mandrel to remove it. And then you trim off just, you know, one notch of the rivet there. And um, then it works fine. So, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of a rib interference uh, behind the hole or whatever it might be. And the rivets are perfect, perfectly functional if you just trim off just, you know, a notch off there to make a shorter rivet. So I don't know what kind of crossed my mind, but... If you take your dimple die and use the, the female side of the dimple die, um, <clears throat> the only modification you have to make to your dimpler to do this is basically drilling out, oh, drilling out this center hole here on, on the uh, steel or iron, whatever this thing is so that uh, the mandrel can go through the bottom. But it's a really simple, easy step. And then I've got this plate here where I drilled a four and a three millimeter hole. Um, one side is not countersunk, the other is. So you've got basically four of your rivets and those are the only ones I've ever had to shorten. So um, for this countersunk one, basically, whoops, man, it's hard to do one handed while I'm filming. <laughs> Sorry about that, I'm not gonna refilm it. Um, and you go like this. And it pushes the mandrel out no problem. Um, then I just grip the back side of it here with some pliers and pull it out. Um, and so anybody who's tapped on them with a hammer, you can bend the mandrels really easily. And it's easier to do it with the three millimeter rivets than it is with the four. But um, I really like this technique. So. Then, once you've uh, shortened your uh, barrel or your rivet there, you'll just put it back. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this one-handed. And push it back on like that. It's quick and easy, especially when you've got two hands. And uh, yeah, I figured that's uh, worth sharing because you do have to do this from time to time. Also, I guess I just completely skipped over the fact that I built this little uh, stand. So basically the height of this part with the die in it is exactly at the height of the table. Then when you have a large skin for, you know, say your, your fuselage skin or um, wing skins especially, you can lay it on your table. And then when this is on casters, definitely locking casters, you can just kind of roll the cart along as you're dimpling everything. Um, but anyway, so a couple other cool things. I have revised this, uh, this uh, vent idea. So now it's a circle with two outputs, one for the front and one for the back, attached to basically a splitter. So this slides onto the NACA duct and it splits the airflow 50-50 for the front and the back. And you have full control of the vents. So I tried to make it so that you could have independent control, one for the back and one for the front, but the mechanism was just getting too bulky. Also ignore the fact that there's, these are just ugly 3D printed uh, prototype parts, but I think this is much better than my previous design. And uh, something that's really cool about it is because it's circular, I can bolt it all the way around the perimeter. And then for the final one, of course, you know, add some silicone or glue or whatever to actually seal it up. And then it's not really possible for it to leak at all. 
Um, of course, there's a, some potential, I guess, for air leaking around the plate in the center, but it's a really tight fit along the edge, and um, it's certainly going to be much better than that rattly vent. So I will do some testing on it and, uh, you know, maybe blow it with a shop vac or something to see if I can get it to leak here. Um, kind of simulate some airflow. Um, another thing that I actually think is probably the coolest of all the updates I'm going to give here is this manifold here. So I've been working with some uh, people locally here with this idea. And basically, if you've already built your firewall forward, you know. And if you haven't, you're about to find out. There's a ton of T's in the system. And basically, by running the fuel outlet straight to this manifold and then having your fuel pump and your uh, check valve, or sorry, fuel uh, filter and your check valve uh, straight in parallel out of these outputs here, then they'll go back up to here, to, to the T, which I'll orient, how do I show it with my fingers, like this. So it's a straight shot out of the filter, and then the T will go out into the, the check valve there, because, you know, under normal operation, that's never open. So that way it's a straight shot from the filter up to the fuel rail and a straight shot from the pump to this manifold. So it eliminates a lot of the uh, complexity of the fuel system. And also this hole on top here is for your fuel pressure sensor. So also you eliminate an extra hose and connection for your pressure sensor. It just goes straight into there. Um, rather than using the uh, differential pressure sensor that comes off the port of the engine, I'm gonna start using this uh, just the G3X uh, fuel pressure sensor that integrates nicely into the system. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, let me show you what that'll look like on the firewall. So here's the firewall of one of the planes. Um, basically, I decided to move the fuel pump over slightly from its original mounting holes here that I'll plug up with bolts um, to over here. There's a bunch of dead space on the firewall on the TSI. And uh, everything clears nicely. There's no chance for the gear, you know, interfering with the pumps or anything. And this manifold will rest nicely right here. So then you get a straight, an elbow out of um, the bulkhead here to the gascalator, out from the gascalator to the fuel pump inlet, and then straight across from the outlet will be this manifold, um, probably somewhere over here. And then both of those, uh, the filter and the uh, check valve there will be there and then straight out to the fuel rail so I'm excited about that and I'll update kind of when I get the engine on next week on that particular airplane and uh, I think it's going to clean everything up and it's going to work out really nicely so the other thing that I'm pretty excited about is both of these guys wanted to put all of their light switches so nav strobe Beacon Taxi Land uh, in an overhead console. So I kind of mocked this little guy up and I brought it over into my plane and set it up in there. Unfortunately, I didn't take a picture, um, but basically because of the curve of the canopy here, and of course this guy's not pressed down because the wires, but um, because of the curve of the canopy, there's no obstruction to your vision. And uh, I'm pretty much, you know, my head basically has no clearance between the top of my head and the ceiling. So if it was gonna obstruct anybody's vision, it would be mine. So I'm really excited about that. I think it'll be a pretty cool solution to clean up the panel. And uh, so yeah, that's about it. And so have a good weekend, everybody. And I'll keep you posted on the testing of this guy and the installation of that.